an easy area to legislate on. Why were these laws needed, in your opinion? Well, most of what the Act does is actually pull together hate crime law from a lot of different statutes. We've had hate crime law across the UK for, for decades now, and this in Scotland pulls it all together in one place. But it does make some extensions, such as the one you've mentioned about the, the new offences of stirring up hatred. England already has some of these, these offences, stirring up hatred in relation to religion or sexual orientation, but this Act does go a bit further. Yeah, it goes a bit further. Just explain how much further it goes. Well, it goes further in that there are also um, protected uh, characteristics in here of, of age, disability and a trans identity. And that comes at a sensitive time in, in Scottish politics, given the debate ar around gender identity and the, the self-ID um, legislation, which was blocked by, by Westminster after being passed by Holyrood. So, so that's where a lot of the concern is coming from in this context. And there's a lot of concern, isn't there, over this issue of whether it's curbing free speech. You've got some very high-profile commentators, Elon Musk, um, J.K. Rowling, um, saying that this is a curb on free speech. Um, what's the counter to that? So the letter of the law, as you've heard from the First Minister already, is, is really very high. You have to have a threatening or, or, or abusive conduct and it has to be intended to stir up hatred. So the existing offence of stirring up racial hatred, which we've had since 1965, on average, I think there's about one case in Scotland prosecuted a year, and that has a lower threshold for prosecution. Intent doesn't have to be proven. So the kinds of cases this could catch are actually pretty extreme. Cases of prosecutions for stirring up racial hatred in Scotland in the past have tended to be people calling for groups of people to be killed or injured. It's, it's not a small thing. This is not about being rude or even vile to somebody on Twitter. Uh, but you'll be aware that um, when we have, you mentioned Twitter there, um, when you have social media, it has taken the level of debate to a whole different level, hasn't it? Absolutely. And there is the, the fear, I think, with legislation like this, that people think this is a tool to sh shut your opponents down, to claim that somebody you disagree with is, is being hateful and, and should be silenced. Now, the law doesn't do that. It's perfectly possible that because of the perception of, of what the law might do, which quite often is very far removed from the letter of the law, that we see an increased number of complaints to the police. And those should not go anywhere. And Police Scotland should deal with them robustly and tell people this doesn't come close to being an offence. But that may be an issue in, in the initial implementation stage of the legislation. Yeah, absolutely. You bring up an issue I was just going to talk about. There, are, there, there has certainly been concern uh, raised about the, the, the police issue and whether this is going to mean that um, rather than investigating other crimes, they are looking into whether something is or isn't a hate crime that's, that's mentioned on social media. Yeah, so Police Scotland have said it's attracted some criticism that they will investigate every report. But that's actually not new. They've had that statement in, in their hate crime policy for some time. An investigation could, of course, simply be looking at what they've been pointed to online or, or wherever and saying, well, that's obviously not a crime and, and, and taking it no further. But if investigations go beyond that, obviously it is difficult for people to be involved in a police investigation, even if it ultimately can't go anywhere. So there, there is a need for the complaints where they're not justified to be dealt with robustly and not taken further. Uh, just finally, um, you talked about the personal characteristics which are included in the bill, which are age, disability, religion and sexual orientation. Women not included, as in hate crime uh, against women. Uh, why was that not deemed uh, suitable for this particular bill? So the proposals that led to the legislation did suggest including sex as a protected characteristic in, in the same way as others. A number of women's groups in Scotland, or views were not uniform, objected to that, arguing that what was needed was standalone legislation. The Scottish Government commissioned a, a separate review by Helena Kennedy and have proposed legislation on that, which will be introduced into the Parliament, it said, later on this year. So there will be separate legislation rather than trying to deal with um, misogynistic crime in exactly the same way as other hate crimes. OK, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Professor James Chalmers, Professor of Law at the University of Glasgow. Thank you.